Hey guys, now in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at a network solution, something that you can plug into your home's Wi-Fi network that's gonna give you peace of mind when it comes to backing up your phone, backing up your files. And also, if you'd like to have remote access, you can do that too. Uh, one of the things that you'll be able to do is even have virtual machines. So if you are, I would say from a medium to advanced technical user that would like to have multiple virtual machines, you know what I'm talking about. This is gonna be the solution that will do it for you. This is the Link Station N1, and this is the first of its kind, a first six base solid state disk NAS solution. We're gonna take a look at its features. I'm gonna show you how it works. We're gonna look at the hardware, and we'll see if this is gonna be something that you'd wanna pick up for your home. I tell you, I'm gushing over this tech, and you're gonna to wanna to check this out. So now from a spec perspective, as I mentioned, the N1 is the first six base solid state NAS solution that I've seen on the market. It provides remote access. It also has an auto backup feature. And the thing that sets this apart for me is the fact that it is incredibly quiet. It's like the only way I know this thing is working is because I see the lights on. I hear nothing. Uh, so not even white noise as you would sometimes expect. Now, it has a lot of expansion. It has two 2.5 SSD uh, compar compartments. It also has four NVMe slots, and it's going to give you a maximum capacity of 20 terabytes. That is, again, check this out again. Look how thin this is, right? It's almost like a notebook. It's going to give you 20 terabytes. It has also a basic license, true basic license of Unraid. And Unraid is a operating system, right, that is used for, I would say, basic and also intermediate to advanced network storage. But it's not just about managing drives, it's also about giving you access to, I would say, applications, plugins, and it also gives you the ability to have virtual machines. And that's why the next couple specs are gonna stand out. So you can literally have Windows, multiple Windows machines running on this. You can have Linux machines, you can have Chrome machines, or all these different machines that you can have running. And because of that, you have a 3.5 millimeter audio port. You also have HDMI 4K 60 frames per second, two USB 3.0, Wi-Fi 6, and also Bluetooth 5.2, which are supported only in the virtual machine. So I wanna make sure that you understand that. You're not gonna be able to Wi-Fi to solid state storage. You're not gonna be able to Bluetooth to solid state storage. This is Wi-Fi and Bluetooth for the virtual machines. Now, you also have 16 gigabits of memory. You also have 4K, four threads, running at two gigahertz. Lots of capacity here, a lot of flexibility, and again, silent operation. Let's go ahead and check out the hardware, and then I'll show you what Unraid looks like, and again, how the file movement uh, would operate inside of an, un an Unraid environment. And again, this is gonna be a very flexible solution for those of you who are looking to have something from basic that will take you to advanced. Let's check it out. Now, as I mentioned, this thing is uber compact. So here's my hand. I don't have ginormous hands either. And you can see how small this device is. And in the back here, you can see all the ports we were talking about. So your audio jack, your HDMI, two USB A's, your ethernet out, your power, right, coming out. And, um, and by the way, this does support PoE. So power over ethernet, that's an option too if you have that set up in your home. Um, in the front here, you have, you know, really simple implementation. I'm going to go ahead and open this up so you can see. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Reminds me of, you know, uh, a car where a deck would open up. But here you have your USB-C, and then here you have your two solid-state drive uh, bays. And it does come with the screws that you'd be able to connect to put in your solid-state drive here. And then all you do is once you have that connected, you slide it back in, it locks into place, and you're solid. Now, on the bottom, and notice I did that without any tools, which is another... I think benefit of this solution. You do have some rubberized feet here, right? And, you know, depending on your network setup at home or how you have things running, I could see this sitting on a desktop because it's a good looking device. Uh, and what I also like is that it's not really prone to mat to fingerprints, even though it has a matte finish and I can see some of my fingerprints there and maybe you can see them, it really doesn't pick them up that much. Now on the bottom here is where you see uh, some more access storage. So I'm gonna open this up on the side, move this over. Notice no tools again. And here what we have are your bays. So I have four NVMe slots that I can have connected. No tool installation, no tool removal, right? So basically you have these little parts right here that basically lock into your NVMe slot. You connect those and you're set to go. Once you put in the actual drives, all you have to do is configure it in Unraid. And then once you've configured it and loaded it, what you do is you enable the share 
and you can determine what type of, I would say, storage solution you want. I have a single drive here, so I don't have multiple drives, so I don't have stripes. Uh, I don't have a very advanced setup. I have just one drive. As I look at expanding this by adding more drives, then what I'll do is I'll probably set it up where there's redundancy and they'll back up each other. And some of the benefits are is that if one of these NVMEs or SSDs were to go bad, I would not lose my data because of how it's configured. And it gives you that ability. So really nice feature. And again, I keep on highlighting the fact that there's no tools required. Here you basically have, you'd put this on top of your drive to keep it cool. And you have one on each side that's just there waiting for a drive to be installed. Now, if you're like me and you plugged in the link station and didn't know what the IP address was, but want to find it quickly so that you can log in, um, all you have to do is make sure that you're in the same network that the link station is connected to. And then you type in what you see here, tower login. Once you do that, you're going to be presented with the password, uh, its root, and I believe it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, you'll enter that and then you'll be presented with the screen. Now, this review is not about Unraid, but I did want to give you a glimpse of what you could expect in the actual version of Unraid that you have installed. I've gone through and upgraded the software, I think maybe twice now. There's been some patches and some updates, and it's updated without any problem whatsoever. The other thing is that this is a licensed version of Unraid. You can upgrade this to get an upper or higher version of it, but this is going to be working well for anyone uh, who's using this in a personal situation or maybe even a small business situation. Now, as a creator, for me, this is a fantastic solution because I have storage, I have backup, and let's face it, I do a lot of video recordings and I can definitely leverage something that has the ability to expand and have a lot of space. So here what you see is just an overview of the Unraid application. You know, you can see your machine, you can see uh, the motherboard that you have here, as well as the processors. Uh, which uh, Docker containers are currently running, uh, virtual machines, which I think is a really powerful solution. You can have, depending on the storage that you have, multiple vir virtual machines. I, for example, have a Windows 11 machine here. And I'm going to show you where you would be able to see this, but we're not going to configure them here because, again, uh, this is more about the link station than it is about this application. There are tons of videos on Unraid. I just want to show you what's there and that this is a fully licensed version of Unraid. So here you'll notice that we've uh, we have our also we've created our shares. I'm going to show you where that's at, and then uh, the saved virtual machine instances with the ISOs. Over here you have the users. So what I'm going to do is just uh, click through these screens for those of you who may not be familiar with Unraid, uh, and then you'll be able to take a look at their site, all the details, and really learn how to use this. So here you can see that there is um, this is the device that I have, and. Also, what you'll see is I have one solid state or NVMe drive also connected to it. So it actually sees it. If I go into my shares, you'll see this is my shares here. And you have to create the instance of the, of the actual uh, drive first before you can do any kind of sharing. You have to do that and you have to go through the settings. Pretty straightforward. All you have to do is walk through it. The one thing I will say is, just like I said in the opening, while this is, I think, a really nice hardware solution, super quiet, like you don't hear anything, and I love the expandability and the small form factor, uh, it does require configuration. So you're going to have to tinker. So this is not going to be one of those out-of-the-box solutions where you just turn, plug it in and you're set to go. There's configuration involved. Uh, the good thing about configuration is that you get to learn the system and you get to really uh, become proficient in it. So here you have your shares. You can look at your users. You can go into settings, and there's a variety of settings here that you can work with. Plugins, there are a lot of plugins and you will be able to download um, a lot of apps as well. So here's Docker, your virtual machines, and you'll notice that here is one of my virtual machines. If I say add virtual machine, notice all the virtual machines that you can add. So you have Linux machines, you have also, uh, what is it, all these Windows versions, you also have here Chrome OS, a lot of flexibility. I really like all this capability. And the key thing here is when you enable these functions, the one thing that you also get access to is to Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. The device itself for storage as an as does not have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. So that's something to know. So you need a physical connection. On the app side, you have a marketplace of apps where you'll be able to download the photo backup solution, the cloud solution. All the solutions that they're highlighting are all possible because of Unraid and the way it has access to this massive marketplace of things that you can install. Again, this will be something that you'll be able to play with at your leisure. Now, it's no surprise that 
I have a lot of video files. We're constantly creating content. And this is where a solution like this becomes so useful for me. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to choose a rather large file that we're going to be copying over just to give you a sense of how easy it is to use this as a network storage appliance. I have this connected to my network in the basement. It's right now uh, right next to my rack. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to drop it here. Now, this is a pretty large file, so we're going to let it go. And then it's, you're going to see it coming through. I'm just going to tell you how large this file is. Oh, there it is. It is. Um, a little bit over three, almost four gig in size. And we're going to see how quickly it's going to come across. Now, what you'll see here is a small progress bar indicating that the file transfer has begun. Now, given the fact that we're going wireless, so while this is connected physically to my network, I'm running a Mac Studio, and the Mac Studio is wirelessly connected to my network. It's taking a four gig file, and it's dropping it onto this drive. And you can see that... It's going relatively fast uh, for a file this size, but it's still going to be limited to the network it's connected to. It. All right, so the file is here now, and uh, the next thing I want to do is just drop a smaller file just to give you a sense of what it would look like. So this is just going to be a photo file, and I'm going to just crop it here so you can see how fast this will transfer. And, you know, that was it. That's, that's how fast it was. It was a larger file, uh, so it took a little bit longer. I'm going to try something else. I'm going to try a... A STL because I also work on 3D printed files a lot. I'm going to drop it in and done, right? So again, this was a four gig file, took some time, but you can see how fast it performs with some of the smaller files. And if you want to look at performance, we'll go ahead and click on this because this is a video that we just did. Uh, it'll be published really soon. Let's go ahead and run this so you can see it, right? So it already started, it already started running here. Uh, so performed pretty fast, loaded, streamed and it's working through my network without any problems. So high performance, compact, no noise to low noise, or actually low noise to no noise. And again, it's a very, very capable platform given the fact that you can use Unraid to really configure this. And I will warn you, Unraid is a powerful solution, but it's also one that requires configuring. This is not for an individual that is looking for something that's a super plug and play, right? And, and not having to do some learning when configuring Unraid. So guys, that wraps up our first look. See you in the next video.